Hi there, welcome. Welcome, friend. Welcome to Homekeepers. How are you today? So glad you're out there. Please stay with us for the next few minutes. Uh, if this is your first time, my name's Arthelene Rippey, and we deal with home issues, and that kind of takes in everything, doesn't it? And so I want to welcome you, and I'm anxious to tell you about our guest today because she's been here a couple times before. And I promise you, you will be so inspired when you hear her story and what she does. And her name is Cheryl Touchton from Pocketful of Change Ministries. And we will explain that to you. <clears throat> but I welcome back uh, Cheryl Touchton. And I'm uh, going to join Stephanie, and we're going to make a meaty, manicotti recipe i've often thought there would be pasta in heaven and here is another form of that wonderful wonderful food that americans love to consume uh, just another version of what you can do with pasta uh, but before i join her i again want to thank you and also ask you uh, to support us i do want to thank you for we have some out there that are so faithful and you just support the ministry every single month. And I don't have the vocabulary to tell you how much I appreciate that. And I'm just hoping a lot of other people will join. There's no gift too small. There's no gift too large. So if you would give to this ministry, you can do it uh, with your credit card or debit card at 1-800-229-0059. Just call that number and there will be someone there to accept your information and also... Uh, you can write to us at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will appreciate it so very much. And I'm over here with Stephanie now, and she's cooking up the meat. Yep. I have sausage, and I have ground beef in here that I browned up and drained, and then I put a little bit of garlic, and I'm mm. just cooking the garlic. And then I know you have something to share, and I have something to share, but I'm going to go ahead and put the, um, the cream cheese in here. Okay? We're making manicotti. It's really, really yeah. good. Uh, and then <clears throat> while that melts, we can talk. Okay. Well, um, so we always pray before we begin the programs. And so often I ask the Lord for new viewers uh, because our potential is huge. And uh, it's very obvious that the Lord is answering that prayer. Sometimes we get it by email. Uh, one of them says, your show is very informative in many topics. I truly enjoy listening to your show while I'm getting ready to go to work. So she gets up early. Early. Yeah. But a great way to start my day. May the Lord continue to fill you with his favor. And uh, another one uh, this week was I discovered you. So that means. Nice. That they're, they are brand, brand, brand new. new. Yeah. So um, we love hearing from you like yes, that. You yes. know, you can write to the address or later on in the program our email address will come up and mm -hmm. don't you thank god for email what, oh yeah and what my, a you time can, they can go, saver then go on my fan book page yeah i answer in any questions that are going on there um uh, that are asked so and that information is on the screen mm -hmm. uh, let's say you on the last program we mm -hmm. made called mac and sneaky cheese, cheese yes for kids which is macaroni and cheese and we sneaked some vegetables in yes. it and you put that on your I did. Already. I did. Yeah. Yes. And um, okay. So I just went to Tennessee. I'm yes. gonna, okay. So I have sausage. I have hamburger. I had garlic. I put in cream cheese and now I'm going to put in some salt. And on the last program, Stephanie told us about being at the manager's meeting because we have 16 yes. stations. Yes. And uh, she is an executive assistant here <clears throat> to our founder. And she went and she was very very ill and she was healed just like yes, that my that back meeting. was out and it yes and then you did something else yes and then i went to white castle <laughs> and i have a picture of the aftermath press <coughs> oh there it is <laughs> well, <laughs> we do this every time and i send them to my family members <laughs> because they're you also send them? yes because i well i send the pictures oh, because okay. they're also <clears throat> jealous that i'm at white castle and they're not because okay, we who all of those me and my dad and my mom just had one so that's me and my dad oh that's terrible no it was fabulous and it was wonderful and i would was like so to, great. i would like for our viewers to tell us what they think about white castle it's a love hate thing you either love it or you hate it there's and really there's none in Tampa Bay where we live. No, no, no. There's none in Florida. 
Really? I wonder mm -mm. why. Mm -mm. I don't know, but it's a travesty. So we were asking uh, one of the officials here this morning if she liked them, and she said no, they tasted like meatloaf. So. Yeah, and but I think you had to start young with them. If you have a more refined palate when you're older, you're probably not going to like them. But if you start mm -hmm. young, you love them, and then... And then on my fan book page, okay, mm -hmm. everyone knows how much I love my dad's spaghetti. I put the recipe up today for my dad's spaghetti. Well, it's, that... Now, I, I don't make it. Do you have I don't, permission? Oh, yeah. He wrote it out for me and everything. You know, some of these family recipes are I don't make it sacred. because even if I made it, it wouldn't be the same. It's not made with the love that he sold. Does so some it's of this go on the bottom of here? Yes, please. Pour some of that, half of that in there. So I'm also going to add some mozzarella cheese in And here. on this, you want, I believe, a very, very plain uh, sauce. spaghetti sauce. Yes. Just, just your tomato with a, maybe a little basil or something. Right. You know, I prefer the really plain, simple one. Yeah. Well, I just prefer my dad's. That's all I prefer. That's all I want to eat. Well, then I think that's great. Like a gift from your whole family. Yes, yes. And I had him write it out, so now I have it in his handwriting for me to have forever. Now, how is this? Doesn't That's that good. Yes. Okay. So now I, we cooked man, manicot, manicotti shells. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you could also, if you want to do something different, you could also mm -hmm. use the big jumbo shells. Okay. That's just a variety. And you can do this whole idea of vegetarian. <clears throat> now the recipe we're doing half of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you'll get the whole recipe so it'll make 14 shells I'm just making seven so you simply take the mixture I just made and you stuff the shells if you let the meat cool it's probably using a little wisdom but I'm gonna stuff it in here hot as can be and mm -hmm. just burn my fingers for everyone here well I took a little taste of that meat and I tell you that it's delicious right gives it, it a gives kick. it a kick yes so you just stuff seven of these mm -hmm. like this. You put them in the pan. You pour the rest of the sauce over. Then you put the Parmesan over that. And then you bake it for, what, about 40 minutes. And that's it. You know, people say, oh, stuff manicotti and so, so much Look, work. I, and this, this is, is e super I could do this. duper easy. Yes. Uh, also, I think if you... Rippy can do it. Anybody can do it. Can do it. <laughs> well, um... I think you bake it for about 40 minutes about four, covered, uh -huh. and then you take it off and, and bake five. it a little bit more. Yep, yep. But. Super easy. Now, when this is cool, I used my fingers earlier to stuff it. It was much easier. Let's see. Okay, we're there. One of these is plenty. So th is this a half a recipe? That's a half a recipe, Oh, my yes. gosh. But, but. You might want to cut it in half. Or make the whole thing and freeze half of it, and then you have another meal already ready. It's what I do with lasagna. Mm-hmm. Like tonight for dinner, we're having lasagna, and it's all I have to do is take it out of the freezer and throw it in the oven. You know, I think people enjoy this kind of thing. It's just a little interesting. This is, and it's com comfort food. It's so mm -hmm. comfortable. Wow. Is that so delicious? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad you like it. It is good. If you um, like pasta, and I'd like to know who doesn't. Oh, you're just going to get it. I'm in there just with in there. Yes. Boy. And next time for Susan, we're going to make a vegetable one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just for Susan. And if you didn't if you didn't want um, meat in easy. it, mm -hmm. um, I would say you could do spinach. ricotta cheese. Yeah. You could do spinach. Uh, some spinach. There's all kinds Zucchini. of things. Zucchini. You could do yellow squash. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a winner. Winner, winner. It is a winner. Monacati dinner. If you would like to have this recipe, <laughs> We will be glad to send it to you. Uh, most people do it by email. Yeah, it's free. But if you don't do email, write to us. We're glad to get your mail either way. Appreciate your wonderful encouragement. And um, so that information is coming up on your screen. And then you're going to meet Cheryl Touchton. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen. Or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Well, it's a delight to welcome um, Cheryl Tushton back to the program. I think you've been here a couple of times. I have been. And uh, there's good reason for that when we get into it. But I'm trying to think back 
Weren't you in business? I was. I and ran, now you're a right? full-time missionary That's right. in an RV or something? In an RV. I travel, yes. I went from uh, corporate boardrooms <laughs> to an RV and, and, and five-star <laughs> hotels and lots of money to uh, eating in a campground. Um, and it, it, I, was, I ran a successful software company in leading-edge technology, and God called me out of that in 2002. And it, it was a couple of years before I realized I was doing this full time. I kept thinking any moment now I'm going back yeah. to corporate America and things. I just kept getting invitations and people kept accepting the Lord and mm -hmm. um, and I wrote a book. And then, you know, it. I just never went back and I have not looked back. You know, it seems like what you do is so biblical, <laughs> so scripture. She just tells people about Jesus wherever she goes and and. Um, I, re I remember one time you told me about witnessing, you know, you're waiting to buy a ticket in a movie and right. start a conversation. And, but let's go back further. Okay. How did you meet the Lord in the first place? How I met the Lord in the first place was I met the Lord when I was eight years old around a campfire. I grew up in church, uh, my family, generations of just wonderful Christian people. Uh, but I met the Lord in a very intellectual manner. I asked him to be my savior. I I knew him. I believed in him. I was saved. Around a campfire. Around a campfire at a church camp. That's they gave why an invitation. I, that's why I believe in church camp. I believe and it youth too. Youth camps and VBS and all those things really try to promote. And churches say you can't give invitations anymore and lead people to the Lord, but that is not true. I, I know so many people that meet the Lord sitting at a church camp or <laughs> in just a youth group or something. It's so important to do that. But that's a lot of them are the called Lord. into the ministry. Right. In those right. Sitting. So, okay, from that point, how did you get uh, this relationship with the Lord where you're out there full time with your RV and your dog? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you, you kind of have to fast forward uh, to me having what I guess you would call the normal Christian walk. I married my high school sweetheart, still married to him today and love him more today than when I married him. But, you know, you raise children, you get used to things, you go to church, you teach classes, you work in Bible school, and you believe in the Lord, but you find yourself getting just as aggravated as non-Christians get, and you, and you believe, but you might not be walking with the Lord in that peace and the fruits of the mm -hmm. Spirit are part of your life. And I went through a very difficult time. Um, I gained a lot of weight, and to the point that I got sick from it, and the Lord and I kind of had a coming to terms. Yeah, I, I come, promised, come to Jesus. Yeah, yes, yeah, come to Jesus meeting, <laughs> where I told him I'd do anything he said if he would just help me because I was bedridden. My mother was raising my children, and he did. And so I, at that point, put down all of the flour and the sugar and everything, and started putting my life back together. And then other things happened. I had several relatives get to get sick. And one night I was in the ICU waiting room, and it was about the third relative that I'd waited there for and lost. And um, I heard them call a code in the ICU. And I stepped into a phone booth because they were running in and out, and they yelled at us to get out of the way. And another young lady who was waiting on her father, we stepped in that phone booth together, and one of us said, let's pray, because they were the only two people in the ICU, so we knew one of us was about to get bad news. And we started praying, and oh, Arthelene, the Holy Spirit, I felt a peace and an understanding. And when I asked God to help me, all of a sudden I knew I could do anything I needed to do. And I got the news that my grandfather had gone to heaven. I had to go back to the waiting room and tell my grandmother. I had to call and tell the family. And this from the person who had, was barely functioning because she had been bedridden and just kind of had just kind of, I don't know, Christian wallowing or something I don't know That's and a good my, term. yeah Christian wallowing and my self-pity and woe is me and uh -huh. you know life isn't what I expect and I thought to myself I never want to be without this feeling again and started seeking it out and that's when I was saved when I was eight mm -hmm. and this was um, this was years later in my 20s mm -hmm. but from that point forward I have been spending time daily in the Word of God, I've been praying, I've been meditating the biblical way, um, the way the Bible says to meditate, uh, because I believe meditation is listening to God and reading the Bible and praying. It, you're praying, you're talking to God, and then you're learning about God through the Bible. And I committed to that, and I 
became successful, went back and got a master's in business, started a business, ran it for 17 years, made a lot of money, sold it, made even more money. And then God called me into ministry. And I only planned to do this two months. I said, two months, I'm going to get, and then I had a tent. Yeah. And I'm just going to travel <laughs> and I'm just going to evangelize. I had been evangelizing since I was a child. I, I do believe I have the gift of evangelism. I have that gift, yeah. I do. But it, you know what the Bible says the gift of evangelism is? It's really not leading people to Christ. It's equipping the saints, the people in the, the church, book. other people to do it. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do lead people to Christ, but I haven't fulfilled my calling unless I have helped the people who aren't gifted that way to give the gospel and have what I like to call now gospel conversations mm -hmm. with people in your path and your circle. So I've been doing that ever since. I just never went back to work. Yeah, and uh, we're going to get into how much this has grown. <laughs> I, I remember, you know, when you were here before, I, I was just amazed at how uh, small. Right. It was solitary. It was me. Mm -hmm. I, it was just myself. I had a little dog and, and I traveled. And it was just me, and I just went. And just wherever you landed, you witnessed. Uh, we're going to put your website on the air, <laughs> and on the uh, screen, and um, the the reason for the name, the pocket full of change, was during this hospital stay. Right. And I know that because of the hospital stays I had with uh, my children and so forth. And this was before cell phone. Right. Uh, way before cell phone. You uh, grab any quarter you could so you can call all the relatives and tell them, what's going everything on. that's going on and so uh, that in itself became a little bit of a ministry it did because I realized when I was sitting there um, everybody was hoarding the quarters <laughs> because we all had to give news in that ICU waiting room and I just had this someone brought me a big roll of quarters and I opened them up and I put them on the table well all of a sudden everybody in that waiting room started talking with each other and sharing, and I'd say, get a quarter if you need it, if you got extra ones. And all of a sudden, we all had more quarters. God, and it was so such good. a, I know, it was such a metaphor for sharing our faith and love, and that you, there's just, you know, there's an unlimited supply if we just open up and share our resources. And so, in fact, Pocket Full of Quarters was the name of my first book, and Pocket Full of Change is my ministry. Well, if they had never. If, the, if you had a cell phone back then, you might not be in the ministry. No, today. I might not be because those quarters was that I was having gospel conversations in that um, ICU waiting room without knowing what to call them. I was we were talking about God and we were praying together. Perfect and that was place. what uh, that was what led to the prayer in the phone booth mm -hmm. was all of those quarters we'd put in that phone booth. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was just such a metaphor. Boy, I can identify with so, that. Yes. Uh, and if you think about it, if you have a pocket full of quarters, you're prepared. Mm -hmm. And we like to say at Pocket Full of Change Ministries, we help people prepare for life and eternity. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it just makes sense. It's a metaphor. Well, before we go any further, uh, she has a traveling companion, uh, <laughs> Shiloh the Shepherd's uh, sheepdog. Dog, that's right. I think we got a picture of, of uh, <laughs> Shiloh and what a, what a precious dog. Well, he doesn't have it. Oh, okay. Well, he's well, a collie. Uh, a Seychellian sheepdog, which uh -huh. is a miniature collie, uh -huh. looks just like a collie. Yes. And I understand he's quite a little missionary. So yes, yeah, she she just is a she, uh -huh. and uh, she loves to visit with people, and she has these little tricks. Like we'll go, if Shiloh loves Jesus, she should sit, and she sits right on the beat. If Shiloh loves Jesus, give me five, and she does it. And so, boy, it draws a crowd. Oh, I guess and it would. It does, and then I can give the gospel to the crowd that we've, you know, and I'm not a street corner evangelist with a bullhorn, but I have a dog mm -hmm. who draws a crowd, and mm -hmm. she loves the attention, and uh, so, you know, we enjoy her. So you you just began to talk to anybody anywhere. Right. And... Um, I remember some of the illustrations or descriptions that you gave us of some of those conversations. But this time you're here, there's other ministries that have plugged into what you're doing That's now. Right. How did that happen and how does it work? Well, I started seeking out other people who had like gifts and talents, but maybe not the means to do it. Mm -hmm. And I started connecting the dots with contributors who had the call to evangelism, but didn't want to go give the gospel themselves. Mm -hmm. 
and use my business background to connect the dots and try to get these people funded. And so what I've been doing um, in the last couple of years, and that's the growth that you've seen, is I go into an area, sometimes sponsored by a church, sometimes sponsored by a group, um, and for like the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival, 100,000 kids come for four days. It's a Woodstock-like concert. And we fly in people from all over the country that know how to evangelize, and people help fund that. And the ministry, who I met on, from this show, by the way, um, the Sojourners Fellowship out of Manchester, Tennessee, just love you. And they called me right after the first time I was on this show. They host us and put us in these nice little houses. And we go into the rock concert, and we'll lead a couple hundred people to Jesus. Um, and so we have gospel teams. And so then I started finding other people who do this. On, they have the gift of evangelism, but they're not a full-time evangelist. And there's little ministries like Inside Out Ministries. Um, and I link up with some of the bigger ministries I've traveled. And they come together, and we meet. And again, my business background, God was preparing me to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And we go out together. We'll be, there'll be uh, two or three sets of ministries, um, actually more than that, doing different things in D.C. over the 4th. And last year, um, our little group of about six or eight people that came literally from Maryland, Pennsylvania, Florida, Seattle, we brought in... We had 358 people right there in the D.C. Mall on 4th of July come to our booth and meet Jesus. And we wow. get their names and now follow up. Now, how for the whole year, them. you told me? Um, last year, just with me personally, mm -hmm. I had 566 people meet Jesus with me. And it doesn't even count these other groups of evangelists that I've sent out. And I go into church and I lead what I call Gospel Conversations Workshops. And I always take them out to a Walmart or a Publix or a grocery store. Can you store. give us a little so, demonstration of, of what we do? Yeah. Okay. I, w I would. And like you be, you want to be the person? Yeah. So, okay. So I, I love your orange jacket. It's absolutely it goes beautiful. goes so well with your pink one. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me where you're from. Okay, I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay. Well, I'm Cheryl Touchton. I'm a Christian from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and I, do, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, not saying it would happen, but do you know if something were to happen to you today, do you know where you'd go in the next life? You know, I really don't. And I hear that so often. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I say to people. I say, you know, a lot of people tell me that. Mm -hmm. And so you're not sure. And, and I'll bet you think about it from some time to time when yes, people get I sick. Do. I know people tell me that all the time. Well, let's say that you got to heaven and there was a heaven and there was a God and you're standing before him and he says, you were just such a beautiful lady and had such a great talk show and the world loved you. But tell me why I should let you into my heaven. What would wow. you answer? Mm -hmm. And people answer that question. What, so, what are some of the answers they give? Uh, well, some of I was a good person. I, the most common I hear is I was good. Uh -huh. Um, occasionally I hear because I believe in Jesus Christ and I've asked him to be my savior and you know ding 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 oh, that's the answer yeah, yeah. but I'm a good person isn't going to do it mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll say my grandfather was a preacher and I'll say well I'm glad of that and so is he still alive no well he's maybe he's in heaven but let's talk about you mm -hmm. um, sometimes people say well I'm not going to heaven my soul is going to explode and seek out yeah. the star that's my destiny and I when when they tell me that I I just get real friendly you know if you're going to get mad at somebody you got to be quiet mm -hmm. so the Bible says we're supposed to love and it says that um, you know that's not people, a situation where you should get mad <laughs> no no at anything you don't have to get mad and so I always tease them I'll go oh what an interesting thought have you ever thought about writing that's so creative and they, they will laugh and say, well, actually, I had thought about writing. And I said, well, let me tell you something. And I go right into Scripture because what convicts the heart is Scripture. It will not return void. And if I can keep this conversation going long enough to speak Scripture over them, they may not get saved then, but they will get saved. And so I really quickly go, you know, the Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But the good news is the gift of God is eternal life and my favorite line in the whole scripture is all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. And by this time, they're listening. They're starting to think, right? They are. And then 
I, I, um, I, I look at them, and depending on their reaction, I think it's rude to tell them about a party and not invite them. And I say, can I lead you in a prayer right now and help you to meet Jesus? Mm -hmm. And they either say yes or they say no. I do not per push no. because the Holy Spirit's job is to convict. My job, I, I don't tell them they're sinning. Um, I will sometimes, you know, when I say we've all sinned and fallen short, I'll let that sit there a minute. And they'll start telling me their sins. And, and when they say they want to pray, I'll say, well, do you know that you're a sinner? Oh, yeah, they all know they're a sinner. <laughs> okay, well, Basic. Um, yeah, they, people know. And, but it's why I like to go to rock concerts and things. These kids know they're sinning there. They yeah, really for do. sure. And um, I don't know if we have time. You went to Mardi Gras this year? I did. Okay, let me say this first because we might have people who just tuned in. On the screen is a website for this ministry because this time is just flying <laughs> by. And also, uh, on there, you have a free ebook, right? I do. If you, if you, if go you there, fill out the form, there's a form at the top of the page. Say you saw Cheryl on the show, mm -hmm. and I will send you, uh, it's called The Secret to Everything. It's my latest book um, about loving God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And it has my story of, you know, coming, you know, to, to God, you know, in my adult years. So, yes, they can and get that for free. And that's an ebook, and it's free. It's for free. We have about a minute and a half. Okay. Uh, but the things I, the pictures I've seen of Mardi Gras and all, <laughs> is beyond disgusting. It's sad. It is so, so heartbreaking. Um, what kind of uh, results have you had there? We had, I think, 44 salvations Praise in Mardi God. Gras. Romans 5:20 says, "Where sin increases, grace abounds." And so I look for places where sin is increasing. You have anything you put in their hands? I do. We have uh, two tracks. One um, says, step up and take your des uh, change your destiny, and it has the gospel in it if they said no. And one says, you made the right decision if they said yes, and it tells them what to do next. And we get their information, and we send them that same book that I'm offering mm -hmm. here, and we have a ministry that follows up with them, uh, the Sojourners Fellowship, that tries to get them connected in their community. Well, you know, I love any way that you get it out. And we have mega meetings and mega churches and all. But the biblical pattern is pretty much what you're doing. <laughs> is that one-on-one, -on -one, two by two a lot. You know, the Lord sent them out. It's uh, person to person. My husband calls me an apostle. Um, my publisher calls me a writer doing research. My church calls me a missionary and they, they ordain me as a missionary. My daddy just called me a hobo. <laughs> that was his <laughs> word for me. He said, you're just a hobo. Take the dog. So, yeah, and just travel. Anyway. Well, uh, every time I'm around you, you really are an inspiration. And I think uh, that way to the viewers, viewers anybody who hears you, <clears throat> because we try to make it so hard. It's, it's so hard, you know. You need to go to Bible school for seven years or whatever. Just, and just do just, it. Just tell them. And we are out of time, but you know you're welcome here. Oh, thank you. you. I love coming here. Absolutely. My favorite show to do. Oh, my God. <laughs> glad for that and we are glad for you my good friend though we wouldn't really be here without our viewers and I hope you know that we love and appreciate you a lot I hope you learned a lot from Cheryl today it's just so refreshing to learn how simple it is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit will do a lot of work when you get involved in it uh, we are out of time though please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a home keeper God bless you if you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 